I am proud to be mayor of the city of Greenville. And one of the reasons is, is that Greenville is now a city that people come to see. And I think we all know why. People from all across the country now come to see our wonderful downtown. We have in, created for these folks and what draws them the kind of place that's energetic and active, it has people on the streets all the time. It's exactly the kind of downtown that cities across America are trying so hard and struggling to achieve. And we've got it. I like to tell people with all the activity and all the things that are happening, part of the reason for the success, well, I always, a good way to look at it is good planning and even greater partnerships. But I'll let you in on the real secret. The real secret is what urban planners call mixed use. It's putting together in the right balance office, residential, and retail clustered together in the same area. If you do that right, you'll get energy and activity nearly 24-7 on the streets, and everyone tries to achieve that wonderful balance, the balance of mixed use. So that's what we have here. That's why it's so successful. That's why that kind of formula works in cities across the country. But we've done something, something else in Greenville. Uh, Greenville has that something else, and that is Greenville has personality. And let me tell you what I mean by that. I mean by that those things about a city, about a place that make it unique and authentic, uh, that make you want to come back to that place again and again. And it's hard, it's hard to achieve. It wasn't always that easy for us either. Today you can come to Greenville and you, you sort of walk on the streets and you sense it the minute you, the minute you set foot on the street. But we had a group of urban planners in, in our city and back in 1997, 1997 to look at what we'd achieve, and they saw some good things, but they gave us a report card that told us that some things weren't so good. We needed to work harder on the mixed use I was just talking about. And they said this about our city in 1997. They said, uh, downtown Greenville does not have a bad personality or image. It just does not have a strong image that is clearly defined and identifiable. Ouch. <laughs> that really got our attention. I mean, we had the trees downtown, we had the Performing Arts Center, we had so many things, and yet this outside group said to us, it's still not the place people want to come to see. So we immediately put into place, uh, very, by, pretty much by design, just as we'd attack, uh, attack the issue of mixed use, we put into place uh, some elements that we thought would add to uh, the, 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 the parts of personality that we think perhaps we were missing. So we did a number of things right off the bat that I think uh, worked pretty well. Number one was a new attention and appreciation for historic preservation, to really get serious about preserving those authentic pieces of architecture we had in our city, to make that a, a priority. Uh, we had the trees downtown. Uh, we did something a little different a couple years ago. We put lights in the trees so we could enjoy those trees, if you will, uh, day and night, to add to that uh, sense of, uh, of place. And uh, by design, we filled the main street with public art. Uh, Art that told the history of our community, art that was whimsical and fun, uh, added to the walkability of the downtown. All those very much, very much by design. Well, the good thing was our um, urban planning experts back in 97, 98 said to us, you know, if you do these kinds of things, that's all very good, good first steps. But they challenged us. They challenged us to do something bigger, something that was a bigger expression of our city's personality and something that would be indeed a major attraction. But what would that be? Well, I'm going to tell you, we did something that cities do a lot of. We set up a committee, <laughs> kind of a committee on personality, if you will. And looking back at it, it didn't work too well. Uh, we, they looked at things like uh, perhaps Greenville needed an aquarium. A lot of cities had aquariums. Perhaps we should look at an aquarium. How about a Ferris wheel? There was a talk about maybe a Ferris wheel. Some cities have done that. Works pretty well in some places. We decided not to do that. But what would that be? Well, the funny thing was, we had the greatest expression of our city's personality there all along. But it was hidden away, hidden away for 40 years. Because Greenville has a waterfall. It actually was the birthplace of Greenville. It was the first place the Europeans traded with the Cherokees. It was where the city uh, had its first, the first mills. Indeed, the city grew from the river. Um, by the time this picture is taken in 1905, the waterfall was, at that time, 
the great gathering place. It was the first place you took friends and visitors. It's, it was the symbol of the town. It was the pride of the community. It was the centerpiece of the downtown, as this picture very well illustrates. And that was in 1905. Well, over the course of several decades of the early 20th century, we had these textile mills that developed along the Reedy River. Uh, the mills, over time, caused the river to be very badly polluted. And by the mid part of the 20th century, uh, the Reedy River was itself a pejorative term. There was an expression, uh, the river the nose knows. <laughs> uh, the, the, so the city turned its back on the river. And uh, over time, uh, people simply didn't go there any longer. And then the ultimate indignity, in 1960, a, a four-lane concrete highway bridge was placed directly on top of the waterfall. That waterfall that was only a few yards away from our main street. And in pretty quick order, people forgot the waterfall was even there. Uh, you were left with kind of a dark and scary place. People didn't go there any longer and people forgot. But not everyone forgot. Meet Harriet White, president of the Carolina Foothills Garden Club. In 1967, the Carolina Foothills Garden Club, under Harriet White's leadership, adopted the area around the falls. They began to pull weeds in their finest attire course, <laughs> push back the kudzu, pick up litter, uh, more importantly, they had a vision, and Harriet had a vision, that one day this area around the falls could be, again, the centerpiece of the city. Uh, she called the area around the falls an oasis in the heart of the city. And she called the bridge the concrete monster. Well, early efforts to um, remove the bridge were met with a lot of scorn and ridicule. Uh, why remove a perfectly good bridge, people said. Uh, it wasn't a popular idea. And so the idea over time, when the first time it was even suggested, died, even though the river became cleaner. So at least it was an idea that might have a day in time one day, but it wasn't going to happen anytime soon. Uh, during that same period, I used to take my son, who was then about nine years old, uh, down to the falls, and I couldn't help but notice how much he and his friends enjoyed that area. And I thought, well, you know, if, if uh, he enjoys it so much, maybe other families would enjoy this area. Maybe it is something kind of special. When I became mayor around 1996-97, uh, I found myself taking visitors to our city to see the falls. It was hard to get to. Again, it was kind of a dark and scary place. Uh, but I couldn't help but show it off to people. And I was always impressed by the reaction of outsiders, of visitors to our city, to this, to this area. That perhaps we did indeed have something, something very special. So in uh, 1999, the summer of 1999, I met with Harriet Weich and the leadership of the Carolina Garden Club and made a promise. And that promise was that I would commit to working to remove that bridge so that their vision of a park around the waterfall could be realized. Yeah. The first challenge was uh, the city didn't own the bridge. The bridge was owned by the state highway department. So we had an initial first uh, task before us. Harriet Weich and I made an appointment to go to Columbia, South Carolina to meet with the new executive director of the State Highway Department, Ms. Betty Mabry. It wasn't a meeting we were looking forward to. We basically were going to go down there and talk to Ms. Mabry about the city taking over a bridge that we were going to tear down. Uh, not something we were looking forward to, to discussing with her. Uh, but soon that before we left for Columbia, something happened quite by, quite by chance. I ran into someone who gave me the for the startling news that this Betty Mabry, who was head of the highway department, uh, was very active in the Columbia Council of Garden Clubs. So I called up Harriet and I said, Harriet, this person we're going to see in Columbia, <laughs> Betty Mabry, I understand she's head of the Garden Club Council in Columbia. And Harriet said, oh, that Betty Mabry. Well, that changed everything. So we, she called Miss Mabry and, Ms., and Betty Mabry actually came to Greenville instead of us going down there and uh, was introduced to the falls for the first time. And from that point on, she became our greatest ally. In the course of only about a year, we had the support and finally the vote of the Highway Commission to deed this bridge to the city of Greenville. So that was accomplished rather surprisingly, kind of quickly, thanks to some people in the right spot. The real issue then was, was, was with our own residents. Uh, 
how to convince people that uh, this place had value. And it was a tough sale. Basically what we were saying was, uh, we proposed to spend $13 million to create a park around a waterfall you've never seen, trust us. <laughs> and um, judging by the uh, constant letters to the editors about the perfectly good bridge and why you would take it down, uh, judging by a slew of petitions from businesses in downtown, as well as some churches in downtown, and others who said, please don't remove the bridge. Uh, this was going to be a very tough sale, and indeed it was. Uh, the city council was kind of divided. Uh, there was one member of council who was very much opposed to taking down the bridge, and I thought this might be some, some hopeful signs that one day he, he called me up and he said, I want to talk to you about this uh, idea of the park. I'm beginning to see the merits of, of having a park in downtown. I have an idea. I said, fine, so come to see me. And he said, um, I want to make a suggestion. Instead of removing the bridge, let's move the waterfall. And I said, uh, well, how would, you, how would you propose to do that? And he said, dynamite. <laughs> and I thought, well, this is not going well at all. <laughs> well, over time, we made the case about the, the special place we had in the town. We showed the picture to a lot of people, spoke to a lot of clubs and such. Um, but it was still a tough sell. But this helped a lot. We finally developed a vision, a good rendering, if you will, of what the park would look like. And that was important because suddenly we're not just talking about taking down a bridge, we're talking about creating a park, a new centerpiece for our downtown and what it might look like with the pedestrian bridge and such. This rendering, which appeared in the newspaper, uh, was sent out in mail pieces and such, began to change people's minds as they began to see something more, at least began to split the argument a bit between those who want, didn't want to take the bridge down, those who might want to park. And finally, over time, we were ready for a vote. And in February of 2001, it went before city council for a vote. Now I want to tell you, the Carolina Foothills Garden Club and Harriet Whites did the, uh, uh, the oldest trick in the book. Uh, they came to the council meeting about three hours early and took up all the seats. <laughs> But the opponents came and they all had to sit in the back. And everyone did have a, a good chance to express their views, pro, pro and con. And I'm happy to say, at that time, the city council voted to remove the Camperdown Bridge. The um, activity in the next two years was quite exciting. Soon thereafter, uh, the bridge was removed piece by piece. Uh, the, a reporter for the Greenville News said at the time that, looking at this site here, that for the first time in 40 years, the sun shone on Reed River Falls. And it was an important moment. And finally, in, in, the, in the fall of 2004, the park opened. And people came in droves to see the finest expression of their city's personality. For many people, it might have been the first time they'd seen the falls. But people were proud again. And once again, we created a place that people brought their friends and neighbors, the first place you, you bring your friends. Another, uh, once again, it was the centerpiece, the centerpiece of our city. Now, what can other cities learn from, uh, from Greenville's experience in, in uh, revitalizing their downtowns? I would say, first of all, the fundamentals of mixed use are still important. Getting the office, the retail, the residential, and the right balance is absolutely critical. Creating great public spaces. But if you really want to create a city that people just don't go to but want to come back to again and again, indeed, a place people love, you're attentive to your city's personality. You find out what you have that no one else has, and you celebrate that. And in doing that, listen to the voices of those who see things that other people don't see. And above all, don't be afraid to be bold. Thank you very much.